Welcome, I used the term generalized Gaussian filter in the UKF video, so today I'll explain what exactly it is in this video. The generalized Gaussian filter is not actually a filter, but rather it is a tool that is used to derive other Gaussian filters such as the EKF or UKF. We will first overview the steps before deriving the formulas, then we'll work through two prominent examples together. From probability, we know that we can factor a joint probability density as p of x and y is equal to p of x given y times p of y, or p of y given x times p of x. The conditional version simply adds a condition on z for every single term. Remember that these equations are axioms in probability. Now, what if we were to say simply replace these x, y, z variables with what we use in state estimation? Then let's replace x with xk, y with yk, and z with our prior actions and sensor readings. So now, if we can write out the joint probability density on the left, then we can factor and write down p of xk given everything else, which is the belief distribution at time k and it is what we care about. Note that we don't care about p of y given everything else, so we can just disregard that. Now let's put this into the context of state estimation. In our recursive filters, we start with the belief bell of xk minus 1, which we assume to be Gaussian. Then, let's assume the result of the prediction step is also Gaussian. We can arrive at this step in a number of ways. If it is a linear Gaussian system, then the result is also exactly Gaussian. Or, we may simply use approximations such as the EKF, PF, or UKF. Following, this is the key step. We need to build our joint probability density. We will go through two examples later on on how to actually build this. Now here is where the magic happens. For Gaussians, once we have this joint probability density, we can immediately write out what bell of xk is. These two steps are where the generalized Gaussian filter comes in. Let's derive this key step now. To write out the Gaussian probability density, we need the inverse covariance. To help us do this, we are going to use the Schur complement. You can go ahead and check for yourself that multiplying what's on the right will give you the block matrix on the left. Because every term is either diagonal or block diagonal with identity matrices on the diagonal, the inverse is extremely easy to compute. Also, remember the inverse of a group of matrices inverts the order of the matrices too. For a sanity check, let's multiply the first matrix by its inverse to see that it does indeed result in the identity matrix. Hence, using this formula, we can directly write out what sigma inverse is. Now let's write out the joint Gaussian where eta is normalization constant. After plugging in the inverse covariance, let's focus on the stuff in the exponential. We can show after some manipulation, which is just too tedious to include here, we arrive at the following line. By definition of joint Gaussians, we know this term on the right is what p of y is. Hence, we know that the stuff on the left must be p of x given y. Looking at this quadratic term, we can take out the mean and covariance of p of x given y accordingly. Let's work through an example now. Let's say we already have a Gaussian prediction step and our measurement model is linear and nk is Gaussian with zero mean and covariance r. Let's build this joint Gaussian together. First, from bell bar of xk, we can fill in the quantities for p of x given stuff. I will use the word stuff to refer to the prior, previous actions and measurements. P of y given stuff is more complicated. First, we can see that P of y given x alongside stuff is just a Gaussian with mean Cx and covariance R. Let's take a slight detour. We know P of x and y is equal to P of y given x times P of x. If we marginalize according to x on both sides, we can find that p of y is the integral of p of y given x p of x dx. Hence, p of y given stuff is this integral here, which is just the integral of two Gaussians. We can indeed go through all the math, but I will tell you now that the result is indeed a Gaussian. And only because we know it is a Gaussian, we can compute the mean and covariance of the Gaussian by just taking expectations. Mu y is simply c times mu x. For sigma yy, we start from the definition, plug in the appropriate terms, and then group terms. Now we can simply expand all the terms, and because we assumed nk, the noise is independent of everything else, the latter two expectations go to zero. So we are left with c, 
times sigma bar k times c transpose plus r. Let's add this to our joint distribution. The last piece of the puzzle is the cross covariance sigma xy. Again, starting with definition, we plug in the appropriate values, group terms, and expand. We are left with sigma bar k times c transpose. And know that sigma y-x is just the transpose, and that sigma bar k is symmetric. Hence, with all this, we can directly write out what bell of xk is. And this is the same result we would get if we applied the common filter equations. Now, for the UKF, please go see that UKF video, we can approximate what mu y, sigma y, and sigma x y is through sampling. In the UKF, we built this joint Gaussian distribution, then we can simply apply the generalized Gaussian filter to arrive at the belief bell of xk. Easy peasy, look how powerful the generalized Gaussian filter is. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.